core being of how you need to improve on the attitude of gratitude, which you need to let go of, which you need to rid yourself of that you can have greater room for the attitude of gratitude. Because if all you're telling God is what you're void of or what you're lack of, even when it comes to giving God, I would, I would give if this bill didn't come up, I would give if people didn't keep at that's not an attitude of gratitude. That's why the word of God says, I give seed to the sower. I give seed to the sower. I give to the giver, not to one who gives because many people give, but they don't give with the right spirit. They don't give with an attitude of gratitude. So he says, I only give seed to those who are sower because one thing you must understand about a sower, they understand that it's a lifestyle, but that lifestyle comes from the conditioning of of their heart. It is not contingent upon what their bank account says, what they have, what denial letters they receive, uh, what, what bracket they fall in, in the social economic, you know, middle class, low class, no class, 1%, uh, none of those things matter. It's the fabric and the fiber of your heart and your heart must be beating attitude, boop, boop of gratitude, boop, boop. Why? Because that's where God meets you at because he loved you so much and he had an attitude of gratitude to see you at your best self, to see you saved, to see you delivered, to see you operating in and through and from the place of the better that he has in store for you. We don't just call it the better life. Better life is what God has predestined and pre-purposed and preordained for us to have. This is why Christ said, I come that you might have life and life more abundantly, literally, physically, physically, spiritually, eternally, but it starts from the inside out. So if you had nothing, if you literally just could stand on only your own core being and start from scratch in life, what would that look like? What are you building your life off of? What would be on the canvas? What would your masterpiece look like? Would it look like a masterpiece or would you just consider it to be a mess? Would it, would you consider it to just be scribble scrabble? Would you consider it to uh, just be a depiction of chaos? It's time to go back to the core. And as we are embarking upon the closing of this new year, uh, this, uh, year 2024 lots of people like to charade and parade you know new year new me but the truth of the matter is most people are an extension in the new year of who they were in the old year who they were in the last decade in the last century you won't change until you change you won't change until you change. You're not going to change because you said some affirmation or you said a mantra or you quoted a scripture until what you're quoting gets down into the fabric and the core being of your lifestyle, of your heartbeat, of your mindset, of your attitude, of your methods of operation. Because God can only meet you where he is in you. And if you are not demonstrating the power of God in and through who you are from the inside, side out, but you're only demonstrating it from mere words that he understands your words, even your heart. He says, yes, I know man's heart and it is wicked because it's so easy to put on the facade because see, this is why God created us in a place of vulnerability, which was our nakedness. But we have mastered in and through Adam and Eve, the deception of clothing and masking and masquerading through the hurt, through the pain, through the disappointments. He doesn't want us to dress it up. Just like with food, the best food is the best, the one that has the best seasoning. We have been indoctrinated to dress everything up, but not deal with things at its core, to not deal with the root of it. But we want to focus on the fruit when the fruit is just an extension of the root. Who are you at your root? Do you have the attitude in your root or every other thing that you're speaking in your mind is you talking about what you don't have or what's not right or how you're sick and tired or how you're going through, how everything is not working out for you. It's time to shift. It's time to get rid of the stinking thinking. It's time to truly be grateful and thankful. These are not just cute Christian sayings, but it has to become our lifestyle. It truly has to be what we are striving for every day. Will we ever be perfect? No, it's not about perfection. It's about pursuit. We serve a perfect God. So as long as we stay in his presence, as long as we are pursuing after his principles, 
we will see the promises in and through us going through the process. So I want to give you a couple of scriptures as I give you that that uh, that that thought to, and that question to ponder on. Because the truth of the matter is, God's word and his principles are not a name it and claim it. You can't just say it, but it's not from a believing heart and you think it's just going to manifest. It has to be you saying it from a believing heart because you have embodied it. You have become one with it because again, God cannot bless or he cannot heal what you don't let be revealed. And the greatest thing that we have is the power and the opportunity to reveal our real self unto him. We don't even have to do it in prayer in public. I know a lot of people like to put their business out there, but God says, I love you so much that I can deal with you in private so that when you show up in public, you are looking like an example and a model of me. Again, not you being perfect, but you being made perfect in and through my image because it is me that is preceding you because you are in pursuit of me. So I've got these couple of scriptures I want to go over on today and just give you the breakdown of uh, how and why we should be thankful. And when I say we, I really just mean you, because if it's not an individual thing, it won't ever be a corporate thing. See, God calls us together in the power of numbers because we are all on one accord in our belief system. But if we truly are not believers believe in how can we say that we are believers and how can we ex- truly experience the full measure of the power of God if we're not coming together in and through his power so we're going to go over these six uh scriptures on today and I want you to continue throughout this uh day throughout this week I want you to uh get in the mindset and the habit of journaling this week and I really want you to start thinking from the core being what am I grateful for I want to know Uh, What are you grateful for on a core cellular level? Not I'm thankful because I got a Starbucks and driving distance. So that's my morning caffeine fits and it gets my day going. I'm not saying you shouldn't be grateful or thankful for that, but that's not at your core because they can go out of business on tomorrow and you'll be left trying to pick from Dunkin' or McDonald's or (laughs) someone else. But the essence of it is what are you thankful for on a cellular level? on a spiritual level, then you build out from there. Because if not, you will truly live a lifestyle of nothing but disappointment if every single thing that you are thankful you are grateful for is when things go right. Can you be thankful when chaos is all around you? Can you be grateful when war is breaking all uh, uh, breaking uh, out all around you? Can you be grateful and thankful when people don't recognize you? Can you be grateful and thankful when you have a dis-ease or an ailment or a sickness in your body? Can you be grateful and thankful if you just lost something that looked like it was going to be a setback? Can you be grateful and thankful? In the times of what man would consider the down times, the in-between times. You ever heard someone say, how you doing? Oh, I'm in between blessings. Can you be grateful and thankful in between those blessings? Can you be grateful and thankful in your waiting season? Let's look at these scriptures. First one, Psalms 104, and it declares according to the NIV, New International Version, that is, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That's right. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Now, this scripture is so important and imperative to understand and to allow it to be a stain on our brain and in our heart. Why? Because it says, in essence, when you're entering into the presence of God, well, guess what? Where is God? He's everywhere. At all times, he is omnipresent. So that means that we should have an attitude of gratitude as a way of life. He didn't say enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise on a Sunday morning or at a a spiritual gathering. He's telling you to give thanks and praise unto his name always. He did not say give thanks and praise to your situation, your circumstance, to your raise, to your new house, to your new car. No, he said give praise to my name because it is in and through my name that you you will have that abundant life, that you will have that better life. So when you have an attitude of gratitude, you can allow me to come in because now you are in alignment with what my word has said. From the beginning, when God created everything that he created, he said it was good. It was like he had a praise party after every single thing that he created. Even though he saw darkness, he saw voidness, he saw what the earth did not have. He saw everything that was uh, within the earth or not within the earth, but he 
said, you know what? I'm going to have the attitude of gratitude and create and declare what I create. It is good. And when you understand that it is all good in your neighborhood internally, it doesn't mean what you're going through is good. It doesn't mean what your situation or circumstance or the challenges are good. It's saying that it is good because you are good because God is good and you are giving thanks and praise to his name, not your situation. And when people say what we like to call Christianese, praise your way out. That is not just a cute quote that you say. Praise your way out is you having an attitude of gratitude and even being able to be real. God, I don't understand it, but I praise your holy name. God, it doesn't make any natural sense, but I give you the glory and the honor anyhow. See, that's how God wants you to operate because many of times we try to put ourselves in the seat and in the heart and in the uh, in the 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 um um um, methods of God. When he's like, you trying to figure out what I have already worked out. I need you to give me thanks and praise. That doesn't mean sit back and do nothing. It means continue to work, continue to put your hands to the plow, continue to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to know what to do, how to do, when to do, who to do it with all while giving praise and honor. Rather it's something that is considered a heartbreak or rather it's something that is considered a heart mate. He says, I don't care what you're going through. Not that he doesn't care, but he is not moved by your situation or circumstance. He is moved by your ability to praise his name. Somebody shout out, well, praise his name. Let's move on to scripture number two, Philippians four, six, and seven. And it declares, do not. And again, I repeat, do not be anxious about anything or, or another word is no thing, nothing, not a percentage of things, not half of things, not the things that, but God, you don't understand <laughs> when he fully understands. He's already seen the beginning from the end. He's already seen you out. He's already seen you victorious, but in every situation by prayer and petition with Thanksgiving, present your requests unto God and the peace of God, which transcends all, somebody shout all, all understanding. See, you trying to understand it. He's like, look, this transcends your understanding. It will, you will never fully understand it. It will never make sense. I know we got this quote, make it make sense. No, there are certain things that will never make sense. And if you spend all of your time and your energy trying to figure out something that you will never fully understand, you will truly miss what God wanted you to do and gain out of it. And that was the fact that he is good and that he will position you to come and triumph over things that you don't even understand. See, that's the true power of God to say, God, I don't understand it, but I'm going to still keep on walking. God, I don't understand it, but I'm going to still keep on praising you. God, I don't understand it. I'm going to keep putting my hands to the plow while I'm doing my handwork. I'm going to still work on my heart work and do my life's work of what my calling is in and through my kingdom assignment. He says, don't be anxious. Don't be so quick to try to figure it out. Don't be so quick to try to surpass him and bypass him and get to the finish line about anything. But he said in every single situation, this is why we can't declare, oh, this is good. This is bad. This is in between. This is hot. This is cold. Listen, he said in every situation, treat it the same with prayer and petition and thanksgiving. Why are you thanking God in something that may seem like it's not favorable for you? Because he declares in Romans 8, 28, that all things are working together for your good. He didn't declare that all things are going to be good. He said it's going to work together for your good because that thing was meant and sent to break you, but it ended up making you because you had an attitude of gratitude with a heart of thanksgiving. So when you prayed, you wasn't hoping, wishing, or begging, but you were thanking him for how strong it was going to demonstrate his power in you. When you were at your weakest, he was made strong. When it seemed like it was going to take you under, he came and rescued you and allowed it to take you over into your place of victory, into your place of of triumph. See, and then give you the peace that doesn't make sense because you're not supposed to have peace. You're supposed to be in pieces. You're supposed to be a mess. You're supposed to be in turmoil. You're supposed to be in chaos and confusion, but you're not allowing yourself to try to understand it. You are guarding your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, which means you are guarding it with praise and the attitude of gratitude. You are not allowing all of the Asians, the irritation, the frustration, and the 
aggravations to consume you because you are racking your brain trying to figure it out. He said, I don't need you to try to figure it out. What you need to know, you will you will know in due season and time. But do know this. You are meant to pass the test. You are meant to come out stronger. You are meant to demonstrate the power of more than a conqueror. You are meant to get to the finish line. You are meant to be a model and example to bring others out and into their place of glory and victory in everything prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. That means when you're praying to God, you're praying in and through the place of belief and your petition is not God. Can you please could have, would have, should have do it, but no God, thank you that it's already done. And I thank you. And I give you the glory of praise and honor for it being done in advance. Number three, Colossians three and 15, according to the NIV again, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since as members of one body, somebody shout one body, there's no division in and through Christ. You were called to peace and thank, be thankful. There's that word peace again. See, there is a peace that God has given you. This is why you know when you're supposed to be at peace, when you see things trying to come to disrupt it, to cause you to be in pieces, pieces in your mouth. You just letting your mouth just have uh, vomit, just letting everything come out. But he says, no, keep every piece of your mind, keep every piece of your words. Sometimes you just got to be silent. Sometimes you just got to stand still to see the salvation of him and not the salvation of telling people off. Oh, let peace be still you are members of one body and that body is the body of Christ that gave you the blueprint through his footprints of how he operated it wasn't just by what Christ said it was what Christ demonstrated to show us how we should be carrying ourselves and it says let the peace of him he had peace that when they came after him when they tried to strip him even when the enemy tried to get him in the beginning if you be the son of man go ahead and turn these uh stones into bread go ahead and do this go ahead and do that he said Said, let peace be still my stomach is speaking in tongues it's rumbling i haven't eaten but the peace of god is upon me within me and it is ruling me i am hungry i am thirsty i am famished i do need sleep this is what christ was going to when he entered into his ministry assignment but it says let the peace of christ rule see christ was al allowed the word of god that encompasses the peace of god to rule within him from the beginning to the end even even though they beat him, they talked about him, they betrayed him. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. That was the peace of Christ that we should be demonstrating. There are some times that people are only hurting other people because they are hurt. So they can only give who they are and what they have. But if hurt people can hurt people, then guess what? Heal people can heal people. But you can only be healed when you let the peace of God rule. Somebody shout rule in my heart, God, so that you can demonstrate what it means to be a member of the body of of Christ. Number four, first Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. And it declares rejoice when always pray how continually and give thanks when in all circumstances. Why? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. All throughout these scriptures, you are seeing a thread. You are seeing commonality. You are seeing how God is allowing us to know how to give him glory and praise and honor because even beyond it just being a spiritual regimen and method methodologies of life, it also affects our human nature. Anytime you are allowing stress to come and to consume you, it puts your body in fight or flight mode. Your body was not meant to live in fight or flight mode because it causes you to beat your body to go into survival mode. And nowhere in the scripture does God say you were sent here or you were put here to survive. You were sent here to live like it's a wild, wild west and it's a jungle. No, you were put here to thrive. You were put here to dominate. You were put here to have authority and and dominion and this is why you must rejoice because you must always remember who you are and whose you are and you are an extension of the most high God if God is of God of God's he king of kings and lord of lords then who are the kings who are the lords you are rulership in this earth you are God's royalty you are the extension you are the lord that he is lord over he is giving you power and rulership in this 
earth. And he says, rejoice always, pray continuously, not pray a prayer of God. Oh, I hope you do it. But your prayer is stating his word. God, I thank you because your word says in uh, Colossians 3 and 15, let God, the peace of Christ rule my heart. See, when you are praying, you are praying what has already been stated, what has already been predestined and pre-purposed. And if you don't know what that is, you speak his word because it is his word that he must fulfill. He doesn't have to fulfill your word. He's not after your words. Your words are not even as articulate enough as you think they are to be able to move God. It is his word that he must move according to because he said that not even one piece of this earth shall uh, I mean, this earth can pass away before just even one piece of my word shall pass away. My word is not going to pass away. I'm going to fulfill what I said. So this is why I need you to believe what I said, receive what I said, and then go achieve and be it because you're speaking it, you're thinking it, and you are being it. Rejoice, pray. Your prayer should have power because you're, when I say power, I don't mean in the tone of your prayer. I'm talking about power in your belief because you're stating it as it has been stated. You're speaking the word as it's already been spoken and you have the track record of Christ Jesus who it says for this is God's will for you in and through Christ Jesus the very one that you accepted and and received salvation so that you can be a joint heir that you can have his peace his rulership and the power to overcome all opposition and adversity Psalms 106 and 1 and it declares again praise the Lord not your situation not your circumstances not your race, not your new house, but praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Why? For he is good and his love endures forever. See, we serve an eternal God. See, many a times you get caught up in situations and you make God a situational God. And he's like, I'm not a situational God. I'm an eternal God. I've already saw you out of this season. I've already saw you out of this situation. I've already saw you out of this sickness. Why are you making me a circumstantial situational God? Praise me for who I am in totality, not according to what you are feeling or what you are uh, facing, uh, temporal, because every season change. We are literally getting ready to shift and change seasons, not only in literal seasons, but even in numerical timing. We're about to go into winter. We're about to go into a new year. So us giving praise unto God who is eternal, who loves, endures forever, it's us acknowledging that things come, things go. But one thing that remains the same is the power and the presence of the Lord. And since he is staple and nothing about him changes, we might as well praise him. We might as well give thanks unto him. Why? For he is good and he created us. So we are good. And this is how we come into divine alignment when we have that attitude of gratitude. Because when he saw you, he literally saw you in in your complete state. He literally, even though this is a big Christian mantra, he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. No, truly he looked beyond your faults and he saw his reflection because he created you in a spirit being first. You are a spirit being having a human experience. You're not a human being having a spiritual experience. When you open the Bible, when you come to spiritual gatherings such as this, no, you are made in his image, his likeness and his nature. And if he is good, you are good, but it's time for you to tap into the real you, which is the spirit you that can praise God in and through no matter what you are going through. You can praise him through it. You can praise him before it. You can praise him after it. Your praise is the same all throughout because it's a lifestyle. It's not contingent. It's not temporal. It's not situational. It's not when you get in a jam or in a bond. It's not when he brings you out. It's not when he makes a way out of no way. No, you praise him because of who he is because he loved you enough to see you as he is and he made you in his image and likeness and he's waiting for you to get the revelation that as you praise me this is what will cause open door opportunities as you praise me this is what will shift you out of that dry place into that place of abundance of, of the milk and the honey and the resources and every single thing that you need called provision being made manifest and have access and reach to it because you understanding that you are an extension of me and as you praise me 
I will lift you up and exalt you because you are exalting me, which means you are always putting me before you and before it because you understand my love endures forever. My love is not just here when your love has come to an end or somebody's love has come to an end for you when you are down and out and heartbroken. No, my love is here for you, for you to continuously tap into it so that you can be an extension of my unconditional agape love that you are not only given what you have in the natural, but you're given from your spiritual reservoir, which means that is no bottom is no limit. It's limitless. You have more than enough to give. Not, Oh, I'm on my last nerve. Don't nobody else say nothing to me. No, he says my love endures forever. Therefore I've given you enough love to give out beyond the love that you have in the natural. Last but not least, Ephesians 5 and 20. And it says, here we go again, always, not sometimes, not a percentage of the time, not only when you feel like it, not when things are going good, not when you get a good report, but always give thanks to God, the Father for everything. There he goes again, not telling you to do it in percentages, but for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, why is Christ such instrumental and such an intricate part through the threads and the fiber of these scriptures? Because Christ was the one that God sent to come in the natural to show us the difference of the dual natures that we operate in to show that you can be dual nature and allow one nature, the spirit nature, to take precedence and to have rulership and domination in your life. Christ came in the natural to show us what it's like to have the challenges of the natural, but to be able to conquer it by the things of the spirit. That doesn't mean you're so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good. It simply means that you understand that you do not have to give into the temptations of your flesh. And that doesn't mean in and through sin, the way most people look at it. That simply means you not living beneath your privileges. That means you not um, not maximizing what he has put you in this earth to do. That means you fulfilling God's will and his perfect plan, his master plan for your life in spite and despite what you're feeling or what you're facing. Christ continuously had challenges and obstacles. A uh, matter of fact, life is one big obstacle course, but the truth of the matter is we were meant to conquer the natural in and through the spirit. This is why it's so important to always give thanks because when you give thanks unto God, it empowers your spirit to conquer the things of the flesh, the things that you're going to deal with in this world system, the denials, the rejection, the no's, the, the diseases, whatever it may be, God says, give thanks unto me. Hashtag, I am thankful. It has to be a lifestyle. It cannot be when you get good news. It cannot be when you get the final results of what you've been hoping and wishing and praying for. It has to be who you are at all times. From the beginning scripture that said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise, all the way down to the last scripture that says, always give thanks. So it's letting us know to have Thanksgiving, not in a, a month, not on a day that we celebrate, uh, you know, coming together as family, coming together, you know, in love and unity. No, that should be our lifestyle for a lifetime that we leave for generations to come to show them what it truly means to live as a attitude at, of gratitude in and through the blueprint of the footprint of Christ who truly showed us what it meant to give God praise anyhow, to give God praise when he didn't understand, to give God praise when it didn't make sense, when it didn't feel good. And I'm talking about in the natural because Christ was natural. He was uh, divinity and de deity. Deity is the natural. Divinity is spirit to show us. Yes, I know what it's like to go through the challenges being in this body, but I also know what it's like to have the spirit to proceed and to trump and to triumph over through the obstacles that you're going to have. Christ was not exempt from the obstacles, but he showed us how to overcome them because you're going to have them. So if your prayer is for God to take away all challenges, all obstacles, that's not biblical. He is going to allow you to triumph over all opposition. That's why he says in James, count it all joy, not if, but when, when you go through various trials of life, the trials of life are going to come. The tests of life are going to come. The, the tragedies of life are going to come. 
But one thing that remains the same when you're in God, when you're following the blueprint of Christ's footprint, that it all equates and it all ends in triumph. What happened through Christ's journey could look like tragedy. It could look like trials. It could look like tests. But it ended with, it is finished. My assignment to bring everyone who believes in this fold that they can have a better life. It is finished. I finished the course of going through the heartbreak, going through the betrayal, going through navigating through this thing called the flesh to triumph in and through the spirit. It is finished that the flesh has any type of rule or penetration to me. Every single thing that's in this body, you guys have pierced it out of me. And now I'm free to be who God has predestined for me to be. And now I open the doors for everyone who chooses to believe on my name, to have that same freedom, to now be able to live in and through the spirit. Doesn't mean negate the flesh. It means have power and dominion over it through the attitude of gratitude, being grateful and praising God for all things because it's strengthening you. It's allowing you to see the power of God at work in you when you didn't think that you was going to make it through. You didn't think you was going to make it over. You didn't think you had the mental capacity to take on one more thing, but somehow you saw yourself on the other side. And he's still giving you strength. He's still giving you wisdom. He's still giving you knowledge. He's still leading, guiding, and directing your pathway that you can live the better life. Do you believe and receive that word on today? Do you have a greater fortitude to operate from a place of I'm thankful and grateful? That's what you should ponder on today, this week, the rest of this year, the rest of next year. God, I'm here, so I might as well be grateful. God, you allowed me to be in the land of the living. So that means you got something for me to do. And I'm willing to believe it and to receive it and to go out and achieve it with the spirit and the attitude of gratitude. Because I am thankful that you are faithful. You are, do, do not fail. And so for that, I put all of my hope, all of my strength inside of you as you continue to lead God direct, protect, and correct me on this path of the better life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you and thank you and honor you yet again for another time, another opportunity to be privileged to come before your presence, to boldly and to confidently, yet humbly give you the glory and the praise and the honor because of who you are and because of what you have given for us to live the better life. And that is everything that pertains to life and godliness. And for that, we are so ever thankful. We're so ever grateful. We give you glory and praise and the honor because you didn't have to choose us. You didn't have to use us. You didn't have to give us salvation. You didn't have to allow your son to come on this earth to give his life that we can have eternal life, that we can have abundant life. We can have Zoe life. We can have the God kind and quality of life, not in the sweet by and by, but right here and right now. So Father, we make a bold declaration on today that we will take on a greater measure of an attitude of gratitude that we will praise you in spite and despite what we're facing and what we're feeling and we will lift you up and we will glorify you and give thanks unto you in all things that we will continuously enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise and we will give thanks unto you and we will continuously praise your name that father we will rejoice always we will pray continually and we will give thanks in all circumstances why because this is your will for us in and through Christ Jesus and father we thank you because we will praise your name we will give thanks to you because you are good and your love endures forever and we will always give thanks unto you because you are God our heavenly father our Abba father we will praise you for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus so father we thank you we praise you we honor you and we thank you for the opportunity to use our life as a a light as a beacon of hope to make a difference through making an impact by allowing us to have the attitude of gratitude and tapping into it into its full measure and capacity so we believe it we receive it and we are grateful and thankful that you are faithful in Jesus name amen come on wherever you are give God praise and glory and honor and thanksgiving that he has given you the opportunity and the privilege to operate from the place of gratefulness and thankfulness 
and always understanding that every single thing is working together for you. Life is not working against you. It's working for you to usher you into your destiny that is also officially known as the better life. So on behalf of your better life family and me and Pastor Blue as your senior leaders of this movement, we wish you well this Thanksgiving week and time frame of you coming together to reflect and to have time of fellowship, fun, and family and understand the power of God's faithfulness. And he didn't bring you this far just to leave you. So your minds will give praise and thanks and honor because it's working together for your good. God bless you all. Now go live your better life offline because you've been power empowered online.